Hello everyone, my name is Scala and I thought I'd jump on here and just share with you how I applied to graduate school and see if this framework can help you as well. I just graduated this year, class of 2021, with my Bachelor's of Science in Architecture and I will be beginning this coming fall 2021 um, for my Master's of Architecture at the Graduate School of Design at Harvard University. So I'm really excited to begin and move up to Boston. I've only been once because We've been in a global pandemic <laughs> for the last year plus. So I'm very excited um, and thought that uh, this video could really help others out. So here we go. I basically have a framework of three steps that are actually a way more depth to them than I can really explain in one video, but we're gonna just try our best here. I'll first start by sharing how you can choose a school. And then two, I want to go into how you can really create a plan for yourself. And three, just getting started because getting started is the hardest part. I wanted to give you guys a quick caveat that I did apply last summer and of course we were in a pandemic and we are still in a pandemic. So I did not have to take the, the GRE, but I did end up taking it. I just never submitted my scores. So that's an option as of right now for school still. Um, but there are requirements that are beginning to form again. So of course, look into those when you're applying as well. So let's start with choosing what schools to apply to. When I started applying or started thinking about graduate school, the first question I asked myself is why I want to go to graduate school. So start with that, that simple question of why you want your, why you want higher education. What are you seeking to learn more of? What interests you? What were the programs in your undergraduate experience that really inspired you and you were passionate about? Something that I looked at was um, my interest in service and the in service to the homeless population as well as service within Habitat for Humanity. So through those two avenues, I really looked into public interest design and I really hope that the schools that I applied to for my master's had that incorporated. So I ended up applying to Harvard, Columbia, UC Berkeley, University of Virginia, and Catholic University, and I got into all of those. So the importance of choosing a school based on your passions um, really can help you in the application process as well. It's also really important to seek advisors. So in this entire choosing a school process, there has to be people in your network, especially if you're an undergrad in architecture, that has have gone to these schools or have um, experience with these different education systems in general. So look, talking to your professors, talking to your advisors, your directors in your school, um, can really help you out in deciding what's best for you and what schools can offer you um, what you're looking for, what you're passionate about. So that's kind of the first thing that I would do in terms of seeking your passions. If you really don't know, having conversations is a great route to start with. Second is make a plan. So this is where we get into spreadsheets and I love a good spreadsheet. I might show my spreadsheet for graduate school above or somewhere in this video um, and maybe even link down below. Um, I'll try to link the spreadsheet that I used all cleared up so you can just copy and paste it and place in your own information as well. Listing the basics of what you want in a school and also just the general requirements for the school all in one place will help you out a lot in the application process. So in my spreadsheet, I have of course the school name, the concentrations that I might be interested in, the tuition, the length of the programs, as well as different interests of mine. Professors that I would love to um, work under or maybe do research for. Um, Personally, I'm very involved in my faith. So a Newman Center or a center where I can express myself and be with the people who are similar to me. But seeking what you're interested in already will at least help you feel at home at those schools. And if you can't find them, there you go. It doesn't belong on your list. Another thing to add to the spreadsheets and making a plan is of course listing out all of your deadlines. When is the application due? When do you have to have your recommendation letters in? Sometimes schools will allow you some extra time after you submit the application to get those letters of recommendation letters of recommendation in as well. Another thing that I really added to my spreadsheet were financial opportunities. So I have a separate spreadsheet for scholarships that were outside of the school, but also the scholarships that were explicitly listed on the school website that I knew that I could apply or inquire further about, I had that listed on as well. Um, an important note to that is looking into application waivers. The, or application fee waivers. The fee waivers kind of can be super simple. They can be as simple as finding the person who does financial aid within the graduate school or the program that you're looking into 
emailing them and asking them for a waiver. And sometimes it's simple, sure, I'll put on your <laughs> account and that's about it. So it never hurts to ask and seek those opportunities as well. Next is really getting to work. And of course it goes hand in hand with the spreadsheets. There are a few things that you really need to know and have together for your application. And they're the obvious things. It's your portfolio for us architecture majors out there um, and related disciplines. It's your resume, statement of purpose, supplementary essays, transcripts. <laughs> There's a, a, a lot of different things that I could list out here, but having these together and having the goals and the deadlines in mind, giving yourself soft deadlines especially, was really helpful for me in my process. I began the summer before I knew applications were due. So say that applications are due January 4th. I began summer 2020 um, first looking into what school I wanted to apply to. And I gave myself a month. I researched, I asked professors for recommendations. My professors are the reason why I applied to half of these schools actually. Um, and by their excitement and their interest and what they saw in me, I decided to apply to these six schools. And from there, I looked into why I wanted to apply to them um, and how that could help me out in my essays, express myself in my portfolio. That also brings me in a light that they would also want in a student. The summer before I chose all of my schools, I also started thinking about the professors and related professionals, maybe um, employers that I would want to write me a recommendation letter. And I actually reached out to them about three months before the application was due. So I just made sure that they had that information and they had, um, they knew in advance that I needed them to write this for me. So regardless, I could give them another month's notice beforehand. And then if it really leads up to that week or two notice, I would send them another email. And it really worked in my favor because it also gave them time to review my resume, write a great letter. And that was one of the most highly commented um, pieces of my application were how wonderful and thoughtful the letters recommendation were. So I'm of course extremely thankful to my recommenders and really happy that I began that three months in advance. Also during the summer, I began my portfolio. So I already had started a portfolio of different ideas that I, or a different projects that I had been working on, of course, throughout my undergraduate experience. And I um, sought advisors for that. So my school had a portfolio class. I could not take the portfolio class, but I still talked to the professor who taught that class. And she met with me multiple times to get it together, figure out how I could express myself best in my portfolio. I also met with professors. I probably met with at least four different people about my portfolio before I thought it was ready to go course the statement of purpose which is kind of the scariest thing for me as an architecture major I just did not write very often so having to write about myself so personally um, was a pretty big thing for me but it also became like one of the proudest parts of my application writing my personal statement was really getting to know who I was as a designer as a budding designer as a budding professional and who I wanted to be so keep that in mind when you're writing Keep in mind what your passions are again. Your passions come to the forefront of everything you do in these applications because that's how the school will choose you. They'll choose you based on how you can truly fit in this school and you know you fit in the school because of your passions matching up with them. Um, so yeah, it's really based on how you can portray yourself. Try to tell a story, a narrative. I'll see if I can maybe share some of my essay or maybe do another video where I'm just talking about my essay because I think a lot <laughs> could be talked about there. So um, yeah, make sure you're putting yourself forward, explaining not only your interests, but also what you've done. So sometimes it comes off as bragging. <laughs> so what you wanna do is say, maybe you worked on a community build and you want to express that you were part of that team. Don't just say that I was part of a community build team. <laughs> Explain to them that this team allowed me to show leadership as well as work in an environment where everyone had different opinions and we came together and we resolved them. And I did this specifically to resolve those issues that came up or to contribute positively to the overall design process showcase what you did but also how what you did affected that community or affected that interest of yours um, and how it could then be transferred over to the school so now you have that community voted um, experience maybe then you say that i'm really involved in community building and i want to continue to be involved 
in my graduate program. And if you can list a specific example, like have deaf humanity at that school, you're all the better. <laughs> you're gonna be great, I promise. <laughs> that would be wonderful. The supplementary essays, which kind of are all over the place. You never know what you're gonna get. The schools have so many different types, such as favorite piece of architecture, your favorite experience in the built environment, or um, your favorite architect and why. Um, and some don't even relate to architecture even. So really diving into how you can express yourself in those and have fun with it. If you're having fun throughout this entire graduate school application process, you're doing it right. Just letting you know you're doing it right. So I hope that was a little bit of encouragement and a little bit of a timeline. I also began those essays about or during the summer actually, um, and then stopped during the semester because studio and architecture is a lot, and then began again during um, my winter break. So as long as you can spread out your time to, and allot your time wisely to these individual things, you will be doing fine, I promise you. It's daunting, but you've got this. And throughout the entire process, having those advisors that you began with, choosing the schools, of course, would be the best people to go to for that further backup um, and for even more advice. They can be the people who also read your essay. They can be the people who also look at your portfolio. They could be there for the entire process. I had one really great advisor who helped me with everything, Jim. If you're listening, you're the best and you know you're the best. <laughs> Um, but I also had professors who were really invested in my educational experience and would even email me um, asking how it's going. So don't be shy, reach out to professors. I am so sure that they will be more than happy to help you out in this process. It's a lot and they've been through it, so they know. <laughs> and yeah, this is basically my quick overview of the application process from choosing the schools to really having a spreadsheet to plan out and then just beginning the work and about of encouragement to you as well. Um, I know this was just barely dipping my toes in the water in terms of application process. So I would love to have more conversation. Definitely comment, send me a DM or email me. I would really be happy to help out. This is a passion of mine, I think, because I went through it and was just so shocked by the outcome of everything. Maybe I'll just have to share my <laughs> my story of how I got into Harvard um, and all these wonderful schools and my experience there. So if you want to see anything else or have specific questions, please do not hesitate to ask me. Um, and I think that's all. Just really try to enjoy this application process, regardless of how daunting it is. I promise you it will be rewarding once it is done. Once you hit submit, whether you get in or not, it's rewarding. <laughs> You're gonna do great. And I'm so glad that I can be on this little part of the journey with you. Um, and I'd love to continue being there for you as well. So good luck, you got this, and see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Peace out. <laughs> Was that even helpful? I hope so. I really hope.